Welcome to Crypto TV, I'm Ornella Hernandez, and it's time to recap news that you may have missed in the Web3 world from this past week. On June 1st, Hong Kong opened its crypto trading doors to retail investors. And in gaming news, Epic Games, the developers behind Fortnite, have committed to adding 20 NFT games to its marketplace. And we will have a special guest today who will talk about the social finance space. So stay tuned for that. Let's get started. All eyes are on Hong Kong this week. Why? Because starting on June 1st, crypto trading will be open to retail investors. This means that citizens will legally be able to buy and sell popular cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum on licensed exchanges. This is actually a pretty big deal. It may even result in a mini bull run. And if there are more traders, then there's more transactions in the market and it all leads to higher prices. If crypto trading goes well in Hong Kong, it could spread to the other parts of China. And China has a weird relationship with crypto. One day it's legal, then it gets banned, then it gets unbanned. <laughs> it's like me trying to decide where I want to eat sometimes. And I changed my mind like five times before going with the first thing that I said. <laughs> but anyways, the crypto landscape in China is basically crypto equals that. So if crypto trading ends up running smoothly in Hong Kong, it could end up being adopted in other parts of China soon too. And another good sign of Web3 adoption in Hong Kong comes from the Hong Kong Police Force. It recently launched its own metaverse platform called Cyber Defender. Cyber Defender was launched to promote crime prevention in the metaverse, with the police warning that all crimes in cyberspace could also happen in virtual environments like the metaverse. And the idea is to educate the public and to prepare citizens for what they called challenges ahead in the digital age with a focus on technology crime prevention. And this is according to a statement by the Cybersecurity and Technology Crime Bureau of the Hong Kong Police Force. Some of these risks include investment fraud, asset theft, and sexual offenses, which already happen every day in the real world and could very much happen in the metaverse and in virtual environments as well. Now in other news, gaming news, Fortnite's creator Epic Games recently announced that it plans to add 20 NFT-based video games to its existing portfolio by year-end. The Epic Games Store added its first NFT title called Blanklos Block Party, developed by Play Mythical last September. This got a lot of backlash, but that doesn't mean that, it, that Epic is going to derail its plan. And so they announced the next two games to be added to their marketplace, and they are called Project Red and DeFi Mob. Project Red is a mafia-themed first-person shooter free-to-play game developed by Elrond Mafia, and players can purchase mobster NFTs to gain a competitive edge if they want and explore the rest of the Project Red world. Web3 actually spoke to a member of the creative team behind Project Red to learn more about it, and here is a preview of my chat with Lowen Voster, but catch the full interview up on our YouTube channel. Our game is called Project Red, and um, you can play, um, you can play whatever you want, like in, in an open world. And uh, you got many activities: uh, farming drugs, uh, selling drugs, of course. Uh, <laughs> talk, talk, peop talk to people. But it's you know, it's a mafia time, so it's mostly like Grand Theft Auto. You got many activities like this. Um, you got uh, yeah, car racing, uh, poker, casino. Etc. Now this is a massive push for the Web3 gaming world, and it signifies the commitment of Epic Games to shape the future of gamers. Despite the fact that the majority of gamers are still hesitant to accept blockchain gaming, Epic Games is not backing off, clearly. And known for its Fortnite title, Epic Games has developed various other titles and boasts over 230 million registered users and a staggering 34.3 million monthly active users. I wish I had those numbers of viewers. Now, after the break, we will have a guest joining me at the desk, and his name is Henry, and he created an educational platform for content creators. So keep watching to learn more. In a world transformed by technology, where the boundaries of possibility are shattered, a new era emerges.
Welcome to the future. This is Web3 TV. Hey guys, joining me, I have a special guest, Henry, the co-founder of Socialfy, who's gonna tell us exactly what that means. But first, let's start with just a learning a little bit more about you and maybe how you got into the crypto space. Thank you so much, thank you. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, yeah, I started off in crypto in uh, 2016. Uh, so we started building uh, decentralized marketplaces on Ethereum, which at the time was uh, sort of the only other option next to Bitcoin uh, to actually build scalable crypto applications. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did that for a few years, and uh, then we ended up building a play-to-earn game, uh, which currently is the biggest play-to-earn game on Polygon. It's called Plant IX. Uh, moving on from that, what kind of what kind of game is that? It's an NFT strategy game. Uh, so it's currently the biggest game on Polygon with about forty-five uh, thousand active wallets. Um, it is a proprietary marketplace where the users will trade their NFTs um, to earn from their um, yield i want to say in the in the game okay uh, so it's quite interesting um, but it actually showed us uh, just how much potential there is for people to earn a living from cryptocurrency and the new applications that come with web3 and you built this back in 2017 uh no this no. is this was a bit later Recent, okay uh, we were we were building uh, decentralized marketplaces for about two years um we ended up uh yeah figuring out more or less um that DeFi and the applications for the retail user um, are quite substantial, mm. um, which is why we sort of eventually moved to play to earn and then now uh, social fi. Because really, social fi is a lot more than just play to earn, right? So uh, you get your social capital. You can you can really monetize that in entirely new ways that weren't ever possible before because you had the banking sector and everything else sort of uh, controlling your financial right. exchanges, right? So let's let's break that down a little bit. Social fi means social finance. So what's like the simplest explanation that you could give Yeah, sure. Viewers. So the social aspect is uh, basically your social capital, right? So social media has obviously, you know, exploded in, in the last decade. Um, and a lot of people have a whole social following on, on these platforms like Twitter, like Facebook, like LinkedIn, right? But they're not really, there's no real ways to monetize it other than having a store potentially. Right, right. Well, it could be in an influencer, I guess, but that's, that's yeah, what it does. Yeah, 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 but usually even the influencers sort of, you know, always go back to to, to, to like building a store or, or selling a product mm -hmm. or a service, um, which is also something you can do in Socialfy, but um, the Socialfy element is really like, how do you monetize your social capital on these platforms in the new frontier of finance, which is decentralized finance? Yeah. Right, so all of a sudden you have access to, um, you know, liquidity opportunities, lending and borrowing, um, leverage opportunities, you have access to, yeah, just much faster cross-border transactions, right? So you could, uh, you don't need to wait anymore for three months to, you know, get a payout. Right. Um, okay. You don't need to, uh, yeah, you don't need to be, you know, worried about different fees from different payment processors, depending on which uh, market you target with your products. Um, so basically, social media meets Web3 and DeFi as a way to make a living or in revenue correct yeah because all of a sudden uh, i mean s social networks in general um up until now were usually always confined to a specific server right or like a, a central company. company exactly yeah, yeah. and uh, now is the first time that you can actually monetize these connections and build these networks at scale in a durable way that are not dependent on the server so if if let's say you work for or, or you, your your social capital is uh, on twitter mm -hmm. right if Twitter decides to kick you off the platform, or if Twitter decides to shut down, um, then... Which it totally could. Yeah, which it totally time. could. Uh, <laughs> then you would basically lose your entire network. You know, you'd be blocked your from your friends. Yeah, and everything that you built over years might just be gone. And if that's your income, and if that's what, you know, you... you yeah, that's what you uh, use to, to sell your products and to sort of reach your audience, then that's a huge problem. Um, you know, and that, that's not even mentioning all the fees that usually these platforms take from you or how they extract your value from your data in other ways. 
Um, so I think now for the first time, really, the, the blockchain ecosystem and the uh, decentralized applications out there enable you to, one, own your own data, monetize your own data in new ways, like I was saying with, you know, liquidity providing uh, with lending and borrowing leveraged positions, um, NFT sales, like just digital assets and how they interact. Um, but also do that in a much durable, more scalable way. Okay, so after seeing all this and learning all this, what did you decide to do about it? You created Socialify, tell me a Exactly, bit yeah, so we, we, built the, um, we built the play to earn game that I was talking about earlier, uh, planetix.com. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really, really, really great game. Um, so you should definitely check it out. You um, will. But we realized that it's just a lot more than uh, than play to earn, right? So we built we built an application that enables users to to do exactly that, to focus on their building a network and building a, a, a revenue source that is scalable and durable. Uh, so we built a platform called Fluencer. Mm -hmm. um, that came first. Uh, that came after the game. Okay. So Fluencer um, dot X Y Z mm -hmm. um, is is the tool itself that people can use to to sort of grow. Uh, their income and their um, their business, I want to call it almost, because it's almost like a personal business. Like influencers will know that. Yeah, uh, well, you monetize your, yourself, your brand, yeah, no? Yeah, exactly. Um, and then we decided that uh, we it also needs an educational platform to support it, because these technologies are kind of new. Not everyone is very familiar with wallets, with... Right. Um, yeah, with using you know, Web3 tools, it's super confusing, especially... It's hard. Yeah, especially <laughs> if you, if you know, you end up on DeFi platforms where you, if you're not into mathematics or economics, it's going to be yeah a little bit overwhelming. Yeah. And even like for us who are in the space, like the other day, I was trying to just cash out uh, USDT and I had to like send it to myself to another wallet to, to, to be able to convert it to USD and I lost a lot of money there and fees. Exactly. So it's like, and, I'm, and it's for myself. Yeah, exactly. And if... If you don't know what you're doing, like it's uh, it's it's very easy to lose a lot of yeah. money very quickly. So uh, we decided to to establish a new website or a new entity, I suppose uh, I should say, uh, which supports that and which kind of teaches people about how to use the tools correctly and sort of safeguards you in terms of like not necessarily interacting with with um, you know fishy websites or fishy yeah. Uh, yeah, applications. Don't want to get scammed. Um, so that's kind of what we're what we're looking to scale now. Um, so that is the Social Pi Academy, mm -hmm. uh, where we sort of take the best out of out of crypto. I know that Binance has an academy as well. It's yeah. the Binance Academy that kind of teaches you that. MetaMask has the same thing. Um, but we want to kind of take it a step further um, and really really nail down Social Pi. Okay. Um, so are you targeting like the students? Are they influencers and and? Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. Influencers are definitely, you know, the best positioned um, from benefiting from that platform. Mm -hmm. um, hence the name Fluencer, right? Um, but it is really for, for anyone because this is something that is going to stay for, for decades. Right. Right. This is like a new way of making money. Like like a decade ago, people were starting to look at Facebook and say, okay, this is a, you know, this is maybe, maybe I can do a business here. And now this is like the evolution thereof, which makes everything more efficient. Um, and, and definitely a lot more, you know, profitable. I would say. Can uh, can we compare it to some other education platform like Coursera, for example? Like, is that is it that type of like module based? Yeah. Interface? Yeah. At the beginning, yes, it will be. Um, so the idea is to have a curriculum of, you know, informal videos with sort of challenges and, and just sort of, uh, yeah, a focus on safety. Um, okay. You know, safety and... Uh, so like safeguarding your assets, you mean? Safeguarding your assets, using the right wallet okay. providers, using the right RPCs, uh, stuff like that. You know, like yeah. different token models will have different um, benefits. So if you, if, you, if you end up launching like an NFT collection, you know, what is the difference between launching it on an ERC-721 standard or an E-1155 standard, all these kind of things. Got it. So we can educate the users in, in what the tools really are, right? And how, how to... Uh, how to use those. Um, so that will be first based on a video curriculum mm -hmm. um, with a, a Discord community where we have uh, committed uh, tutors that will sort of guide you through on a one-on-one -on -one basis and help you scale your your knowledge of the tech. But it also goes further into, you know, we actually take people and turn them into entrepreneurs. So we teach them, okay, how okay. do you build a business? 
how do you build a business, how do you run a remote team, um, because usually all of these teams are remote, you know, you might have someone in Singapore, you might have someone in London, you might have someone in uh, New York. So we, we, we teach them about exactly um, how, to, how to run that business, how to build a marketing strategy around their, 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 uh, okay. their brand and so forth. So it goes a lot deeper than Coursera. So, but is the goal to have, to take someone's existing product or service or business or whatever it is and implement or take these learnings from blockchain and Web3 or is it to start their own businesses in Web3? Um, it depends on the, it, it, it really depends on the product because you can't, uh, you can't just take any product and, and web three fire, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you can tokenize it, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For some you can, right? Yeah. But for, for others you can't. So it's really it depends on the the product itself. It depends okay. on okay on the person. It depends on the market too, because if you're trying to sell a product, a web three product, to a market that's not ready for it, they're not going to understand it. Of course. Yeah. So it, there's a lot of education that goes into into building a, so, a, pro, a profitable and, and solid social fi um, business. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, we want to we want to start. You know, we're also going to probably keep it very very small at the beginning. I want to say. When when do you plan to to launch or have maybe beta users? Um, well, actually, it's funny because we're launching today. Oh, okay, yeah, so great. We're launching today. Oh, you heard it here. Yeah. Socialfy launches today. <laughs> um, Fluencer.xyz is launching today. Okay. Um, so yeah, you 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 can already start with uh, using the tool and sort of figuring out um, you know what this is all about, and then. Uh, the Socialfy Academy will probably be fully. I mean, the website's already live. Yeah. Socialfy dot academy, um, but uh, yeah, the real the real world work starts now. So. Okay, I see. Yeah. Okay, and um, so how does how do you how does one sign up? Like, or are um, are you choosing? For Fluencer people? specifically, all you need is a um, wallet address okay. or your MetaMask. Um, so anybody can sign up. Yeah, anybody can sign up. Um, so the, the beauty of, of uh, Fluencer is that uh, it builds a NFT graph uh, of the people that sign up. But what that means is it builds um, an infrastructure for sort of affiliate uh, mechanics on chain in an NFT graph. So yeah, it's a bit what does that mean? Con <laughs> conceptually a bit uh, like a, a bit. like a social graph, like a yeah, kind of like a social graph. Connections. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is a bit more in depth about the product. Um, we have time; we can go into it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, just to get back to your question, uh, with Fluencer, you just sign up with your wallet, yeah. and the Socialfy Academy is not is not quite there yet. So we're still developing the Web three sort of onboarding for that. Gotcha. So you can sign up currently as a as a as a user, um, just like would you would sign up with any other website with a credit card, and then you know join the community, and then go from there, and then connect your wallet later, and so forth. Um, so what would be the immediate benefits if I were, were to sign up today? If you were to sign up today, um, I mean, because we're just starting, it's it's probably not that, uh, you know, that beneficial right away, I would say. Uh, it needs time to, to grow to a community. Like this is, it's very often in, in Web3 that that comes up, um, is that people build amazing products, but there's no one to use them. Right, so yeah. Or no real like business model. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With no real market or, or you know, use case. Yeah. Um, so it takes time to build a community and once the community is built, then it will really take off okay. and then you will see real benefit. So right now it's just like you sign up and you sort of reserve your spot. Um, because I was also, yeah, I just wanted to say that earlier, um, we kind of want to keep it small. So it will be quite exclusive at the beginning mm -hmm. because we really want to curate the right environment. We don't just want to like open a platform and just, you know, come who pleases it's like we trying to get the right people for it to all work together yeah yeah it makes sense especially in the beginning while you're still working out all the tweaks yeah yeah because we need to really we want to build something that is durable um with the right the right community the right incentives i guess okay yeah. and then let's get into a little bit more of just the education space um in general in the world of web threes and maybe what are the the challenges there that need to be addressed like why is education such an issue basically um ju just because i mean one one big angle is just because there's so many rugs mm. you know and so many people get scammed and that's why well, that, that's what turns this this entire industry into such a um such a you know uh, I was going to swear, but there, but I didn't. No, no, you can't. <laughs> um, that's what turned this entire industry into into such a, a 
Ah, not the word. It's it's complicated. Yeah, I guess. it's complicated. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's um, it's an industry that is still very very early, very young, very infant in in. Yeah. Nascent. Nascent. Mm -hmm. The word. Yeah. Um. So. It's just it's just important that we keep it safe, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree for sure. Okay, and then tell me a little bit more just about um, you mentioned your your journey as a founder, and are there any learnings maybe that you you've taken away in the past few years as a founder, as an entrepreneur, um, generally in the business space, but also specifically in the blockchain space that you could share with us? Yeah, um, that, uh, I mean, it's kind of the same as in any industry, I guess. The only, the real problem, I guess, is how people see our industry mm. and how, like you say, how nascent it, it is and, uh, you know, how much regulation is lagging and therefore a lot of people think we're criminals or we're crazy people because it's never going to go anywhere. Um, so that's definitely a big, a big hurdle. Um, but the support and like the freedom and just the, the excitement about working on in innovation is, is quite unmatched. So in that sense, uh, yeah, in that sense, I would recommend and encourage anyone to, to join the industry. Yeah. But as a founder, it's pretty much the same as, you know, any other tech vertical, I guess. It's the same as building a website back 10 years ago. Oh, but it's easier now. Definitely yeah, easier now, especially with AI. You can basically uh, set up anything very fast. Yeah. Um, do you incorporate AI at all into your product? Uh, we do, yeah, we do. Um, we're just developing a, a crypto native social site chatbot based on ChatGPT4. Okay. Yeah, which is super exciting because it really helps us um, optimize the community, make everything a lot more responsive. Is that for like customer service purposes or? Customer service, support, guidance, um, yeah, and also just community fun, I suppose. Mm. But uh, yeah, AI is definitely on the forefront. Yeah. And any other trends? Um, you mentioned, yeah, your, your play to earn gaming. We can talk a little bit more about gaming. Uh, for example, recently I know Epic Games, the developer of Fortnite, they announced that they are going to add 20 NFT based games to their marketplace. I think that's a pretty big deal. Um, maybe we can yeah. hear your thoughts yeah, on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, working in, in Web3 gaming uh, is kind of shows you what the potential is. A lot of people see Web3 gaming as being like the next frontier of, of finance as well, yeah. actually. Um, but also just of, of, of like how to work in, you know, it, it's the new, whole new spectrum of working because all of a sudden you are like half playing, half working, which is super exciting. Um, but I think a lot of big, a, a big gaming studios see that like Ubisoft, um, you know, or Epic or yeah. Rockstar, like they all see this. But again, we go back to regulation, like they, they can't really make a move until it's fully regulated and they know that from a legal perspective they're operating in the right environment. You know. But it, there's also a lot of backlash from gamers themselves. Besides regulators or governments, it's like... Yeah, yeah. You but know, that's, that's just because like crypto in general is seen as a scam. Right, right. right? Yeah. yeah, as you but, were saying. Yeah, before, yeah. but it takes, it, takes, it takes focus and actual legitimate genuine interest into, into what, uh, what crypto actually is at the very bottom for, for people to see through that you know because just because there's so many scams and so many rug pulls and stuff yeah so what, what's it going to take to change that perception then i think it's just safer models less less of a wild wild west uh, <laughs> situation yeah we're still kind of in those early yeah wild, wild west days yeah yeah unfortunately yeah. especially in gaming but it's getting better uh the european union just released the mika mika um regulation i know okay. that hong kong and dubai are working closely to uh to figure out regulation around digital assets um, and gaming and, and yeah. finance in general. So, yeah, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be too far off. I mean, I know that like there's a lot of big companies, uh, including uh, Facebook and others, who have dedicated research and development teams working on figuring out what the exact uh, use case should be for their product. Yeah. Um, well, Meta right now is uh, I think next week is launching their VR headsets. Right? Uh, that's Apple. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, Apple. Apple. Apple is doing that next week. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, I, 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 like, you know, the, the global regulation on crypto is sort of in the works. Um, they just do it on jurisdictional level, yeah. but, you know, it's, it's bound to happen. 
Um, and when that happens, I think all these companies will have product ready like this within 24 hours and just have, you know, a crypto. They just need the green light. Okay, go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. They just need to be safe because they're shareholders, they're public companies. That's so true. That's true. Set up. But yeah. All right, Henry, I think that's all our time today. That was Henry, the co-founder of Socialfy. I can't wait to check out Fluencer and Socialfy. Thank Very you so much. Thanks for having me. It was great to be here. Um, and yeah, anyone out there, uh, go check out Fluencer.xyz or Socialfy.academy um, and uh, jump on the Socialfy trend. And everyone, please stay tuned for the market report coming up next. In a world transformed by technology, where the boundaries of possibility are shattered, a new era emerges. Welcome to the future. This is Web3 TV. The NFT lending space is heating up. First, the NFT marketplace Blur launched its collateralized lending protocol called Blend, allowing a buy now, pay later approach in purchasing NFTs. This happened a few weeks ago during the first week of May, and members of the community had varying reactions. Some believe that it's massive for the space, while others called on the SEC, the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, to protect users against such products. Now we have Binance, which is the world's largest crypto exchange, also enabling NFT loans. This means that NFTs can be used as collateral for Ethereum loans. And for now, only holders of blue chip collections, so Board Ape Yacht Club, Unite Yacht Club, Azuki, and Doodle will be able to use this feature. The head of products at Binance said in a press release that the new feature will provide new liquidity options for holders, allowing them to participate in the market without having to let go of their precious NFTs. So this touches on the point that NFTs have a liquidity problem. Indeed, they are illiquid creatures by nature. So why does it matter? Because up until the ability to borrow money against your NFTs, your only option for getting cash from your JPEG was to sell it. And finding a buyer is a lot more difficult than selling a stock or a token in the open market. So platforms like Blur and now Binance and before NFT DeFi are shaking up the way that people think about NFTs as an asset class. But then again, this might also result in creating a lot more DGEN. And it works the way that most bank or personal loans do. But in this case, the user can pick out an NFT to loan out. Then they set the terms of the loan, including interest rates. And borrowers that like the deal can accept it instantly, then that borrower must return the NFT or the collateral will be taken away. So borrowers should remember that the value of NFTs can be volatile, the price can fluctuate significantly, and users should be aware of the risks involved before taking out a loan. There is always a risk of not being able to pay the loan back and losing a lot more money in the process. So tell me what you guys think about NFT loans. Good for the market? Yes, yay, or nay. Well, that's it for today on Crypto TV. Please remember to check out the rest of the Web3 TV YouTube channel for more reports, event recaps, and interviews on all things Web3. And hit the like button, click subscribe, and leave your thoughts in the comments section below. See you later, guys. In a world transformed by technology, where the boundaries of possibility are shattered, a new era emerges. Welcome to the future. This is Web3TV.